Welcome to episode number 28 of Profit or Loss, the series where I take broken electronic items from eBay, fix them up and hopefully sell them for a profit. Today I have two faulty Nintendo Switches that I purchased for £100, so £50 each. It's been a while since I've worked on a Nintendo Switch and I'm actually really looking forward to it. Not in great condition, especially this one. It has a little bit of what looks like to be burn on the screen or maybe it's just completely scratched. Whereas this one is in slightly better condition but not much better. I've got a bunch of parts and stuff for all of the Nintendo Switches that I've not been able to fix, so I'm hoping that we can make these look really, really good if we manage to fix them, that is. These Nintendo Switches have no power, but there could be a plethora of issues that await us. Let's start with Nintendo Switch number one. Condition as stated, we have the scratch on the screen, not looking good. We have the screws here, which is nice. We don't have any screws in the bottom of the device. We're missing the top one. So I think that this one has definitely been opened before. All right, how are we looking? To be honest with you, we're looking all right, hey? This port looks all right. I can't really see any bent pins or anything like that. We look good. The clasp at the bottom is a little bit un... No, to be fair, it looks all right. So we can go ahead and plug in our ammeter, which allows us to test and see what sort of current we're getting. That might tell us what the fault is. Before we do that, I'm gonna let you in on a little trade secret that when I tell you, my boss isn't gonna be happy about. This is how I actually map out all of my screws at work. And it's as simple as a block of white tack. I wasn't too keen on it to start with, but what you can do is you can literally lay out all of your screws in the same way that you take them out of a device that applies to laptops, anything. The good thing about it as well is you can score it so you've got like different compartments. Most importantly, if you put a screw on, it doesn't go anywhere. You don't lose it. A huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. PCBWay are PCB specialists. From creating your own personal PCB, various sizes, different colors, and complete customization to sharing a project that you've created, PCBWay has it all. Leave comments on other people's projects or even download the Gerber files left by the author to give it a go yourself. PCBWay pride themselves on customer service with the help of their live chat function. Simply click on the chat bubble at the bottom of the screen so they can help you with any of your PCB needs. Check out the link in the description for a $5 welcome bonus. Now I'm not going to pretend I'm looking for the first time. We have an actual SD card. 128 gig. I have also checked to see if we'd have a game for the double whammy but we don't. I completely forgot about that. Something I said I would do but didn't before I took it apart. It's okay because we've taken all the screws out but we haven't actually taken the casing off. Is we're going to see what kind of a reading we get on our ammeter. So actually does it turn on? No it doesn't. Okay. This little device should help me know a little bit more about the fault on this Nintendo Switch. So let's plug it in. Okay. Port feels a little bit wobbly, but we don't get anything. We get nothing on the ammeter. Let's try this way. Nothing at all. Usually can indicate a short, it might even be the fact that we have a bad fuse. It's very, very possible. A bad port or a bad M92 chip. All of the above. First looks, what do we have? Ooh, is that water sticker a little bit poked up, perhaps? Ah, uh, what's going on here? Over to the microscope a second. What's going on? We've got a severely scratched up component here. Or maybe just a hair or two. Oh no, it's just, it's just, uh, someone's definitely taken a cotton bud to this. So we've got that. I'll show you in a sec what, what concerns me. Uh, BQ doesn't look like it's been changed, which is obviously very nice. The port still looks factory to be honest. So I'm okay with that. What I'm concerned about, what's going on? How are you selling an item that's faulty? It's not faulty. There's no components. So this is the M92 T36 power management IC and it doesn't exist, which is why we're probably not getting any draw on the ammeter at all. We're putting power to this switch and it's going, I don't know, what do I do with it? Let's get the board out. Okay, board out of the chassis. How is the back of the port looking? Because I've not even checked that out yet. The max IC looks okay. Just looking for any um, cracked or damaged chips or anything. P13 USB looks all right. The back of the port, yeah, it's definitely factory. Uh, we don't seem to have any liquid damage or corrosion from what I can see, which again is a result. So I wonder why, like what's the story? Why would you take off an M92 T36? Is it because you thought it was shorted? I have my multimeter in continuity mode. Black probe is going on ground here. I'm just gonna measure around it and see if we have a short. Doesn't look like it so far. No, no. Okay, so we have no shorts around M92 T36. Let's just check around BQ. Maybe they had some sort of issue with like charging. No, it seems all fine. They've definitely poked around because you can see these look like multimeter probe slipping or something on these caps and they were there before I've had a look. That looks fine. The coil, all good. And just the fuse quickly, check that. 
Yeah, fuse is also good. All right, so everything seems to be all right, including the port on this. There's no way that I just put an M92 T36 chip on this and it works, right? That can't be, uh, that, it can't be as simple as that. Why do I have a feeling that there's a lot more wrong with this switch? If you're competent enough to take off the component, what else has gone wrong, you know? First, we're gonna tin the DIC because uh, I've had quite a few issues recently where solder has not taken properly to the IC. So we're gonna sort that out now. And it's as simple as just applying some flux, a bit of solder, and away we go. All right, let's see what happens now. We've replaced M92T36. The person who worked on this before, or at least removed the IC, didn't even take off the thermal paste. They removed M92 before the thermal paste. Moment of truth, what I'm looking for is 15 volts and a little bit of an amp draw that goes back down to zero. What do we get? We get something. We get 14 volts, 0.01, .01 drops down to zero, perfect. Test the other side. 14 volts, yeah, pretty much 15. 0.04, .04. it's not dropping down, it's just staying at 0.04, .04, which isn't usually the correct behavior, but I could be wrong. 0.01 .01 there drops down to zero, that's right. And this side, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, and stays on. Okay, I'm gonna put it back into the housing and see if we get anything on the screen. All right, what happens? Here we go, battery's being plugged in, etc., etc. Charging symbol, anything along those lines. 0 0.08 could be a really flat battery, 0.11. We've got 15 volts, which is good, but we get nothing on the screen. But again, that could be because the battery is completely flat. So I'm gonna leave this for about five, 10 minutes or so, and hopefully we should see something pop up on the screen. So the switch is now bumped up to 460 milliamps. And again, it's still at 15 volts, but we don't get anything on the backlight. So let me show you. The, but the battery's got about 3.7 volts in now, which should be enough to just at least turn the switch on or indicate that we have a battery charging symbol. So again, if we just plug it in, the backlight, isn't doing anything. It's not attempting to come on or anything along those lines. Now, when you get a Nintendo Switch that's charging at 470 milliamps and it's taking 15 volts, sometimes it can be quite difficult to identify what the issue is. I'm thinking off the top of my head, it's potentially in RCM mode, which means people are trying to jailbreak the switch. I don't know if maybe it was in that mode, somebody messed around with M92T36, couldn't get it to work, and then just sold it on. But I'm not getting any type of boot seekers or anything. So I'm gonna plug it into my PC and see if it's in RCM mode. We're now over to the FLIR cam, and what's interesting, I've not got a battery hooked up to this switch at the moment. I've just plugged in the ammeter, which is the cable you can see here, and no battery or anything, but look, we're getting 36, 37 degrees on the BQIC without a battery. This was the side that was showing 40 milliamp draw. If I turn this over, so I take it out, obviously BQ stops and the temperature slowly falls back down. But if I flip the charger, so now you can see the numbers, it's not drawing any amps at all. We're not reaching those temperatures, it's not doing anything. So it almost feels like I put it in one way and BQ is fine, but I turn it round and it takes quite a bit of a, quite a bit of heat on BQ. So again, we're looking now, 32, 33 degrees, turn the charge around, and as you can see, BQ is getting hot. 36, it does go all the way up to around about 40 degrees. In my opinion, it whittles it down to one of two, BQ or the charging port. Hence, when I'm turning it round, we get different readings, but I feel like it's more so a BQ issue. Before I just go ahead and swap out BQ, I'm just gonna measure some of the resistors around the IC. I guess a quick check in diode mode, just on the caps, as well, I've checked the resistors, resistors are fine. So that's 0 0.2 voltage drop. That's 0 0.1, that's 0 0.5, that's 1.1, that's ridiculously high. That's ground, that's 1.1. Has Beaky got so hot it's rubbed off some of these numbers here as well? This is a donor board, just to cross check those diode readings. 0 0.3, almost 0 0.4. What was it on here for that one? 0 0.25. So it's quite low there. What was this one? 0 0.1, right? Yeah, that, I mean, that's 0 0.4 on the donor. This is the board that we're working on. Was this 0 0.1? Yeah, 0 0.1. So that, that diode reading is ridiculously low for that one. Let's check this one where we had 1.1 volts 
on the one we're working on. That's 0 0.5, so I think we've got a Dodge BQ chip. Yeah, 1.1. I think we've got a Dodge BQ. Nice that we have at least something that's a little bit different. Let's replace BQ and see if that makes any difference. Okay, so now we have our BQ chip soldered. Do I still get that weird behavior of 0 0.04, 0 0.02, 0 0.04? Yeah, we do. Let's check those readings again. I know it doesn't necessarily look soldered all the way around, but it is, I can confirm. 1.1 still. What about over here? 0 0.1, 0 0.26. And just to triply check, I have another donor here, which I think I've done some BQ work to. What do we get here? That's shown as 1.1. Hold on. This is another another one which has a factory BQ. 1.1. Okay, maybe it's the board revision then. So this is a HDC HAD CPU 01, and the one we're working on is a HAD CPU 10. Let's just check again some of the other things. 0 0.38, 0 0.37, 0 0.25, 0 0.1. So we have an issue here. Now, from what I remember, this actually goes obviously through here over to the max IC. So I don't know, maybe we have an issue with the max IC perhaps? That's reading 0.1 voltage drop. And I wonder if that has continuity. So if I put that there and then we go over here, does that have continuity with here? Yes, it does. Okay, so this path goes to here and we seem to have a bit of a low reading. So I wonder if it is indeed the max IC that we have an issue with. Again, rather than the port, I don't think it is the port. I'm gonna take off the max IC. voltage drop do we have now? 0 0.06. Okay, so we've definitely made a difference there. I'm just going to replace this IC. Just give it all a nice little clean. I did simply take this chip off somewhere else and just plod it on here. And I'm most definitely gonna have to reball, but I just wanted to try my luck, if I'm honest. Let's see what reading we get now over here. I think we actually have a short now. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, we have a short now. That's what you get, you see? Yeah, definitely have a short to ground. I just thought I'd actually quickly check. So I've removed the IC and I've made sure that we don't have any, uh, any bridges or anything like that. And if I go over to the area we're supposed to have 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 in voltage drop and I measure, we get 0 0.06. In resistance mode, I get about 30 ohms. Whereas on this board, I get in the region of mega ohms. So I don't understand really what's going on. Now I do also need to be careful here because I'm not in continuity mode. I'm not getting a beep, so it's definitely not short to ground. But I've also got nothing else to try really. I'm still getting a short reading up here as well. That's meant to be 0 0.4, but it's 0 0.2. And we have the exact same readings as we did, obviously minus taking off the max I see with the other BQ chip as well. So I don't know if it's, it must be another fault somewhere. I don't know where this cap goes. Maybe one of these caps, we're looking for a 0 0.2 or something in that region of a voltage drop. That's 2.8. What? That's nuts, that's crazy, that's so high. I had the probes the wrong way around, which is why that was, <laughs> that was happening. Uh, I'll be honest about it. Yeah, these are all very low, but nothing showing 0 0.2, which is what that other path was. I've just made another discovery. Again, I'm just, at this point, I'm just uh, trying a bit of everything. But in diode mode, if I read on this cap here, which goes directly into this little chip, I get 0 0.094. On here, which is a donor, if I measure this side of the cap, which also goes into this IC, I get 0 0.4. So I'm just gonna take this off and plonk it here. Don't know if that's gonna do anything, but we're trying all sorts at this point. Out of interest, what am I reading? Still 0 0.064. So where does that, that goes into that chip and then we don't know where that goes, right? What do we get now? We get 
0.047. And we're not getting these readings because we don't have a max IC on the board because like I said, on the donor, without a max IC on, we're still getting around about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 in dive mode here. It's just a question of where these caps go because this goes to here because that's the same reading. So I get the same reading here, 0 0.6, as what I get here, 0 0.6 which is also what I get here, 0.6. So they all must be linked in some way. I'm gonna inject voltage as a last ditch. I don't I don't know what else to do. And then I'm just gonna have to call it there and just might have to use this as, a, as donor parts. Final steps for me with this board is to take off the charging port and also just remove P13 USB to see if we get the standard good diode reading around that BQ area. If not, gotta call it there. And with the port and P13 removed on the back, do we get any difference? No, nope. nothing. 0 0.06 in voltage drop, aye, aye, aye. I think we have to call it on this one. I've just injected voltage. How long has this been like this for? What the flip? Okay, there we go. I've just injected voltage and I get no amp draw whatsoever. So I'm actually gonna call it there with that Nintendo Switch. As a lot of people tell me, time is money. First item in a while I think that we've not been able to fix, but we're gonna move on to switch number two, which we might be able to break even if we're lucky. This is also a no power Nintendo Switch. But I'm hoping we can actually fix this one. Condition wise, the sticker on the back seem to have all the screws that we need, which is good. Maybe, just maybe, it's not been opened before. I've checked the charging port, that looks A-OK. -okay. So let's see what draw we get on the ammeter. So this one takes a charge. We have a battery charging icon, it's taking uh, 160 milliamps at the moment, 15 volts. Just need to make sure that it turns on, I guess. All right, do you want the bad news or the bad news? The bad news is that it got to 470 milliamps and it was fine. We still had the battery symbol on the screen. And then after about five more minutes, I've come back, 470 milliamps, no battery sign, which is the same as what we had on the other switch. Just curiosity, turning it over. Exactly the same, nothing on screen. Try one more time, just make sure and see if we get anything pop up. No, so it's almost like the switch took too much current and maybe something's gone wrong with it. I'm gonna take it apart. We've got the same symptoms as the other one in terms of charging, but I'm just gonna quickly check. So it's just not actually booting, so the fuse is fine. Okay, so we do have some diode arrays here. Now these diode arrays can be a pain, so I might end up just taking those off the board. But if we look at BQ, what do we have here? We've got 0 0.3 voltage drop there, 0 0.5 there, which is meant to be because it's a different board division. 0 0.5 there, 0 0.5 there, 0 0.5. 0.3 continuity through coil yeah continuity through coil any shorts around m92 t36 i doubt it because again we had we had the charger didn't we yeah it's fine so m92 t36 is also fine i'm gonna take the board out of the chassis because i haven't actually done that yet so again board looks absolutely spotless i don't think anybody's been in this one I'm gonna get rid of this diode array here and also get rid of this one down here and see if that resolves our issue. With those diodes removed, everything else is plugged back in as much as it needs to be. Do we get anything different? 0 0.33, 0 0.48, no backlight, which means if I turn this around, we're not gonna get a picture. Okay, all right, let's take the board out and, uh, and do some more inspection. Again, port looks factory, I think. Looks all good, we've taken that diode off, the one on the back has come off as well. We've tested N92, we've tested around BQ. Like, board inspection seems fine. I've just checked a few areas on the CPU and they seem to be okay. P13 USB can cause charging issues, but no short there. Well, I don't know what to do. Exactly the same as the other switch. Different board revision, different symptoms, because BQ and everything else seems to be reading okay. Let's check under the thermal cam and see if anything is getting hotter than what it should be, I guess. We seem to be getting a 0 0.07 amp draw without a charger connected, but again, look at BQ, the area, 39 degrees without any battery connected. This area is getting to 37 or so. Spack of the CPU looks a little bit hot as well, to be fair. Let's turn it around. Yeah, BQ again reaching 42 degrees. It's just not making any sense, which in turn, again, we have the max IC getting hot, 38, and CPU specifically here getting hot. Or oh, this is, I think, RAM actually, you know? That's not a reflection, is it? No, I don't think it is. That is a heat spot. No, sorry, that is CPU in the corner. But if we zoom out, we can see clearly the hottest area on the board is around that BQ I see. Just plugged it into the PC to check RCM mode. No RCM mode. I'm gonna put my focus around BQ again and just 
double check everything in that area. But it's so strange. When I put the amp meter in, we, should, we shouldn't be getting this 70 milliamps of current. It should be zero. So the fact that's happened on both of them, I think, honestly, their CPU's gone. It's, goes, it goes to 0 0.03 and then 0 0.07. I'm just gonna take off the EMMC. Do we get a change in behavior at least? I'm not looking for miracles, but 0 0.03, 0 0.07, exactly the same without actually 08 without the EMMC plugged in. I just think really unfortunate. I could start removing a bunch of stuff, RAM, CPU, uh, M92, P13, BQ, every, and, but I, to be honest with you, it would just be nice to have a donor board that's kind of intact so that I would, if I need any parts from it, and I think I know at least that the individual chips work. But that's two for two that I've not been able to fix. Now I do have some updates as well. The PS5 that had the issue with the controllers that I marked as fix after some more testing playing Spider-Man, the controller disconnected and then I couldn't reconnect it probably after about 10 to 15 minutes worth of play time no idea what's going on there meaning i'm gonna have to deduct that profit from the spreadsheet just to make things fair and even i'm also gonna have to deduct the cost of these from the spreadsheet as well but there is a tiny little bit of light at the end of the tunnel and that is the nintendo switch light that i worked on in last week's video we actually managed to fix let's head on over to sally's spectacular spreadsheet for some very bad news. Before we deduct, we were sitting on a profit of £745.53p. This here was a PlayStation 5 episode. The console cost me £200. Obviously, this won't be entirely accurate because of the percentage of the eBay fees and whatnot. I'm just going to replace this with £99.70p. So that's minus 200. So if I put minus 100 right here. Also, we have to add the profit from the Switch Lite. After eBay fees, I'm gonna say I'll probably be able to profit 90 pounds, making this 149.99, bringing our total profit to 535 pounds 53 instead of that nice seven something that it was. Saying that, the bodies of the Nintendo Switch, presumably they work the digitizer, the LCD, um, all of the bits that you get inside on the motherboard. So as we all know, it's not that direct loss of 100, but I think I've been extremely unlucky there, or I'm just really dumb. So if you have any feedback or you think you might know what the issue is, leave it down in the comment section below. And I've had a really good run recently, so I need to be super appreciative of that. It had to come to an end soon, and I'm kind of glad it wasn't too much of an expense, like 16 PS5s, but it is what it is. Thank you for watching. I'll leave the last episode in the series up here, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.